My beloved brothers and sisters, the first instruction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in the Quran is actually to all mankind. It is not only to the believers. Listen to what he says. It is verse number 21 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuha an-nas u'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O people worship your rabb for your information, Rabb actually means the sustainer, the nourisher, the cherisher, the provider, the protector, the one in absolute control of every aspect of existence. That is the meaning of the term Rabb. So Allah is saying, O people, worship your Rabb who created you and those before you in order that you can develop taqwa. If you recall, I had said in the previous episode that taqwa is developing the correct relationship with Allah. Some say fear Allah, some say the consciousness of Allah, and many people have different aspects of taqwa that they've included in the meaning. It actually means to create a barrier between you and the wrath of Allah. So Allah is telling us develop a correct relationship with me. And Allah is telling all of mankind Worship your Lord, the one who made you. Surely he who made you is the one you're going to return to. So interestingly, if you look at the first verses that we have already spoken about, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this book indeed, no doubt there is guidance for those who have taqwa. Now Allah is telling us, if you want the taqwa, you need to worship me alone. I created you, I created those before you, and it's important that you worship me in order to develop that relationship. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about those who are rightly guided. Indeed, those are the ones who are upon guidance from their Lord and those are the successful ones. We would only be able to achieve comfort in times of crisis if we developed the correct relationship with Allah. And this is why Allah says in verse number 26, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحْيِي أَنْ يَضْرِبَ مَثَلًا مَّا بَعُوضَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا Allah is not ashamed of giving an example or the similitude of a mosquito or even a fly or anything beyond that. He gives these examples as for the believers, they know that the truth is from our Lord. But subhanAllah, if you look at the crisis we're facing right now across the globe, it is the crisis of a virus that has overtaken humanity. Everyone is struggling, some form of anxiety, some form of concern, some form of change, or some form of worry. My brothers and sisters, it is Allah who is showing us his power, the helplessness of man. And this is why if you take a look at mankind, no matter what we have, it is always nothing compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns. He owns not only us, but whatever we own is also owned by Allah. It's amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to turn to him by saying, I've given so many examples. The mosquito, such a small insect, it's an example. It would actually make those who are huge worried. Worried about what? Certain things, disease and so on. But if you have a connection with Allah, you would understand it is the Almighty. It's His plan. Let's not despair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of, or part of the story of Adam, the first of our species. In these verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, right at the beginning, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how Adam alayhi salam and his wife Eve, or Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam, how they actually turned to him when there was only one thing that he had asked them not to do, and they fell. So if you look, Allah says, 
وقلنا يا آدم اسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقربا هذه الشجرة فتكونا من الظالمين. We told Adam, O oh Adam, dwell therein yourself and your spouse in this paradise and eat whatever you wish, but do not come close to this particular tree or you will be from among the wrongdoers. And you know what? Shaitan, the devil, came to him and unfortunately made him slip. He fell. Human nature, he faltered. Don't we all falter? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him some words and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard him say those words. Those were the words of repentance. And that's why Allah says, فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah forgave him, for indeed Allah is At-Tawwab and Ar-Rahim. These two qualities again, bringing about comfort in times of crisis. This was a crisis for Adam alayhi salam. He just made a huge mistake. He did something so bad. It was the only thing Allah told him not to do. It was major for him. Allah told him personally that, you know what? Don't do this. And that's exactly what he fell in. Allah warned him about the devil. Don't we get warnings? Aren't we from among those who are told time and again not to do something and we still do exactly the same thing we were told not to do? Look at how weak man is. So Allah says you're in crisis because you did something you were not supposed to do. Well, right at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, here verse number 35 of the Surah, Allah says, we're going to show you what the first of your species did, your greatest forefather, and we're going to show you how we forgave him and how everything was okay, how he achieved comfort in the time of his crisis. What was the crisis? He sinned against Allah. What type of a sin? It was a major sin. It was the only sin and he sinned. He transgressed. What did he do? He was ashamed of himself. He was very embarrassed him and his wife, both of them extremely embarrassed. So they called out to Allah. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ O oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, we will be from among the losers. So Allah says, we forgave him. Do you know why? Allah calls himself At-Tawwab. That doesn't mean one who forgives. No, it means one who keeps on forgiving. He forgives again and again and so on. So this is Allah's quality. He doesn't just forgive one time. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. You will feel the comfort. You will feel the comfort in the time of the crisis that you're in, that you've actually plunged into with the doings of your own hands. But my brothers and sisters, it's not too late. Turn to Allah. Remember, Allah is at-tawwab. He is the oft forgiving. Ar-Rahim, the especially merciful. He has a special mercy. Subhanallah. So don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. The story of Adam alayhi salam. Allah chose to mention this part of it right at the beginning of the Quran in order for those who actually start reading it to achieve comfort. Imagine we know as humankind we've done wrong. People want to turn to Allah. They start praying. What about my previous life? Is Allah going to forgive me? Yes, he will. And yes, he has, and yes, he shall, and yes, he did. Subhanallah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Remember these good words, seeking the forgiveness of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought the forgiveness of Allah more than a hundred times, more than a hundred times. One narration says more than 70, one narration says up to 100, and some take it even beyond. So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very merciful. He loves us and indeed he will definitely forgive us. My brothers and sisters, we are all searching for comfort. These are different difficult times, but we must know that when we turn to Allah in forgiveness and we repent to Allah, He will open the doors of mercy for all of us. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about his mercy and he says, to seek forgiveness is actually the key to the door of the goodness that Allah has kept for you. In so many places in the Quran, and we will get to see this, where the people sought forgiveness and they were offered relief. They were given comfort immediately. So much so that if the punishment of the Almighty was descending upon a nation, when they started seeking the forgiveness of Allah, that punishment would be withheld. Now, my brothers and sisters, when a crisis comes in our direction, we should never be quick to say this is a punishment because anything that drew you closer to Allah can never ever be a punishment. It is at times a blessing. It is Allah's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you his favor by tapping you in a nice way to say, turn to me. If it made you turn to him, it was only a reminder. It was only a lesson, a tapping on your shoulder, part of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are quick to say, this is a punishment. No, if that has brought you closer to Allah, it was never a punishment. But those things that drew you further away from Allah, even if they appeared positive, were definitely not positive at all. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. A lot of the times people look at material items, worldly matters and say, well, if I've been blessed with that which is worldly, then I'm blessed by Allah. That's not necessarily true. If you're closer to Allah in your relationship, then it was a blessing. But if it took you away from Allah, even if it was the millions and the billions, it was never the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and the best of this world and the next. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor us. May we be from among those who can repent. For indeed, it is through repentance that we will achieve comfort. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future, inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.